Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I guess you picked the topic of today's show because you wanted to remind me that I've never been to Louisiana or New Orleans or the Fairgrounds racetrack. Matt, what's wrong with you? Well, I, I actually I, I picked today's show because I thought you were one quarter Louisiana bred, but maybe maybe I'm mistaken. Anyway, folks, we are celebrating a, a state bed program. As Matt mentioned, it's the Louisiana breads. They're having a big day of racing. It's a it's a slow week on the national scale, so we want to do this uh, kind of a new thing for Horse Center and celebrate Louisiana breads with Louisiana Champions Day, Matt. We're going to look at four of the biggest races they have on a stakes-laden card, all for the Louisiana Brits. Are you ready, sir? I am ready. Let's go. All right, here we go. We're going to start with the Classic, which uh, came up uh, a little bit short on numbers. Uh, that's because there's some uh, there's some pretty good horses in here, Matt. Let's, let's, of course, start with the one where it makes sense to start because Touch Upon a Star, I think, is not only proven to be a really good Louisiana bread, but he's proven himself outside of Louisiana bread races. Yeah, absolutely. Quite a record uh, for this horse that likes to race on the front end with uh, 12 career starts, top three finishes in all 12 with nine, nine wins, Brian. All those wins coming against Louisiana breads, but you mentioned uh, uh, he has ventured out into facing open company, which he did back in May at Lone Star in a grade three and finished second. Yeah, that was a good second in the grade three Sexton Mile. He, he also won recently, Matt, a, a uh, open stakes race as well. So it's not mostly all Louisiana breads. And he's dominated Louisiana breads. In fact, he won this race by uh, nearly five lengths last year. Touch Upon a Star, a four-year-old son of Star Guitar, who, who was a star Louisiana bred himself. And there's a, a gaggle of Star Guitar sons and daughters running on Saturday. But Touch Upon a Star is speed from the rail, Matt. I think controlling speed. He's the one clearly that has the speed in this field. And those races uh, outside of Louisiana breds make me feel like uh, he is a horse who can venture outside. But for now... He's in this $150,000, nine furlong, Louisiana Champions Day Classic. You can tell by the odds board that his main competition or his chief competitor on paper is the number four. Matt, he's only a three-year-old, though, Tumba Rumba. Yeah, only a three-year-old, but comes from, uh, from, from, comes from more high-profile connections, trained by a trainer that we know, Brian Lynch. And Florent Giroux will be uh, riding. Last seven starts have been against Open Company. And he had a really nice third place. Uh, just beaten ahead in the Oklahoma Derby, which is a grade three, and won the Ellis Park Derby. Yeah, if you've been following Tumba Rumba here in my home state, Kentucky, uh, you've liked what you've seen from Tumba Rumba. Because actually, uh, earlier this year, he won allowance races at both Churchill Downs and Keeneland. And we know that's pretty high competition for the three-year-old. They came against three-year-olds, as did uh, more recently. You you mentioned the Ellis Park Derby win. Uh, so he, he won at all three major, or three of the four major Kentucky tracks. And that was all in open company. And then, uh, yeah, last time third by a head. So it was a uh, three-horse photo there in the Oklahoma Derby. So Tumbarumba uh, facing older horses, facing touch upon a star, but he certainly has really nice credentials as well. Now, a stable mate to touch upon a star, Matt, is uh, is Mangum. And Mangum, a son of Mo Tom, uh, both are trained by Jeff Delome. And he has a pretty good record as well, 6 of 11 overall. Yeah, I think, isn't that, is that trainer related to the football player, uh, Dick? <coughs> Jake Delhomme, Brian? I, I think he is. Uh, anyway, I digress. Uh, Mangum uh, uh, is a horse that likes to run off the pace a little bit, 
hey, he's got four wins in a row, Brian, including a uh, a Louisiana bred race that had a good field at fairgrounds last time. Yeah, you, you look for horses. A lot of these horses are running uh, at other tracks, uh, Delta Downs, Louisiana Downs, even Evangeline Downs. So you look for horses, or I look for horses a little yeah. bit here who had some good fairgrounds experience, whether we're talking about dirt and turf on Saturday. And uh, Mangum fits the bill coming in off a win. Uh, touch upon a star stable mate is not to be ignored in this classic. Uh, another horse we probably should talk about a little bit, Matt, is Bohemia Star. The number two, uh, a son of Star Guitar. You probably guessed with that star in his name. Uh, fourth choice on the morning line, Matt. I guess his claim to fame, he, frankly, he doesn't look as good as the top three to me, but his claim to fame was running second in this very race last year behind T Touch Upon a Star. Yeah, a little bit of a gap between the top three down to this one. And this one's also cross entered uh, in the turf on the same day. Yeah, I, I wonder which one uh, Behemoth Star, because he's a horse to consider in both of those races. This is a bigger purse and a smaller field. I think Behemoth Star might end up here, but uh, we won't know until Saturday. As Matt uh, mentioned, he is cross-entered in the turf. All right, that's our look at the Louisiana Day, uh, Louisiana Champion State Classic, a mile and eighth, 150,000. The other three stakes we're going to talk about, Matt, are all $100,000 races, and they go in different divisions here. Let's take a look next at the juveniles. These are the two-year-old Colts we're going to focus on, and, and this is uh, maybe one of the better betting races of the card. We've got a field of nine two-year-old Louisiana bred males, and I think there's reason to talk at, at least about five or six of them. Uh, let's start on the outside, Matt, because... I guess spinning aces would have to be the one to beat. He's only run three times the son of hard aces, a grandson of hard spun. Uh, but after a decent debut, he absolutely aired in a maiden. And last time he won a stakes race in open company. Yeah. Uh, uh, and this is a horse that, uh, that likes to press the pace. So be right up there. Um, you mentioned that maiden special weight win that was by 14 lengths, Brian. And that victory came in the John Lafitte, which is open company at Delta Downs. So uh, uh, lightly rate, more lightly raced than some of the others, but uh, a really good resume. Good resume coming off an open stakes win. Yeah, you'd have to say spinning aces is, is the horse to beat, but he'll move over to fairgrounds here. And you mentioned something about his ability to be close to the pace. I, I, I think we should talk about that a little bit. Uh, in the classic, it really looked like Touch Upon a Star was the control and speed, the one true speed horse in the race. In the juvenile, granted, it's a different kind of race, six furlongs for horses who, a lot of horses who haven't run a whole lot yet. But it looked like there was a, a good deal of pace in this one. And the favorite spinning aces is, is part of that. And, and I guess you could say the same about the number eight horse. His name is Strong Promise, Matt. He's the son of Broken Vow. Uh, ran a bummer last time, but it was a sloppy track when he finished seventh. Before that, uh, his his actual record will say four for four. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And I, and I agree that uh, last race looked like an anomaly caused by the uh, sloppy track. He'll get blinkers on in this race, also just to note. And from those four wins in a row, He's got three stakes wins, and those four wins came at four different tracks. And Brian mentioned the pace. I just also want to note that uh, the uh, Timeform U.S. pace projector said that a fast pace is expected in this race. We don't have the Timeform graphics up uh, for this show because we're covering four different races. Yeah, that's right. It, it was a fast pace. And not only was it a fast pace, I think there are several possible horses that are involved uh, in a uh, uh, what's likely to be a pretty contentious pace. Strong Promise won his first three races impressively, which included two stakes. He was actually put up in his fourth race when he was bothered and finished second to the wire, but uh, took home the win. And then last time, again, a sloppy track. That makes a good point. Uh, blinkers on should add speed to a horse who's been usually close anyway. Uh, but the, the the good point being uh, he, he won his first four races at four different tracks. 
That's uh, pretty impressive already for a young two-year-old. More speed as, he, as we work our way in. The seven is Stovall. Stovall is the son of half hours. We've seen a lot of half hours o over the years, Matt. Um, a nice allowance win at Delta Downs. Looks like another horse, though, that could be involved or should be involved early in the, in, in the early fractions on Saturday. Yeah, and uh, he uh, had the lead uh, in his last race, actually, which was against the next horse that we're going to talk about uh, as part of, uh, you know, a fast pace and ended up finishing third in that race. Yeah, that race uh, came at uh, fairgrounds, and, and I think that's a little bit important. Matt mentioned it's the next horse we're going to talk about as we're working our way from the back end of this field. He's El De Nero. El De Nero, five to one on the morning line, Matt. That, that those morning line odds interest me. Coming off a stakes win at fairgrounds, sprinting, and he's the one in the field that uh, looks like a capable rallier. He he's been rallying all along. He's got two stakes wins the son of El Deal. And uh, given the pace projection, I think El De Niro makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, I think he does make a lot of sense. And I, you know, I, I misspoke before, but yes, uh, El De Niro uh, certainly has uh, shown the ability to close in all of his races. And, and that includes wins, you know, uh, in races that were even five and a half furlongs. So uh, he's getting the race set up. He's getting the race set up, and he's got a stakes win over the track. Uh, he doesn't have an open stakes win like Spinning Aces has, but uh, interesting horse here in the Champion State Juvenile. One other horse for sure we should mention, Matt, is Good and Stout. Good and Stout is a son of Cole Front. Uh, he, he won the uh, Louisiana Legacy, uh, but he was DQ'd. He's the one that uh, a Strong Promise got put up in front of when Good and Stout uh, – uh, came in in the stretch, and Good and Stout looks like another horse with good credentials. Uh, he was second uh, uh, before in another stakes race, The uh, before the race he was DQ'd in. He's on the rail, more speed. All right, so that's our look at the Louisiana Champion State Juvenile. Um, I think it's a good betting race, Matt, and, and I, I think there's several potential winners. We talked about five. I, I know there's other horses in there that uh, I wouldn't completely throw out, especially when we're talking about uh, these inexperienced horses, but maybe one of the more interesting races that I look forward to betting on Saturday. Uh, the next one, we're going to go to the turf, Matt, Fairgrounds Turf Course. We're supposed to have good weather uh, all weekend in New Orleans, so we're expecting a fast and firm uh, conditions for a Saturday. Let's take a look at the turf field here, Matt. This is also a hundred thousand dollars. It's a mile and sixteenth. These are males, older males, going uh, a mile and sixteenth on the turf course. It, it strikes me, Matt, that a lot of these horses, a lot of these Louisiana bred stakes horses, are running pretty equally well on turf and dirt, and we see a little bit more of that in this field. Yeah, that's interesting point you're making. That yeah, there's a uh... There are horses uh, throughout where there's turf to dirt, moving back uh, between uh, surfaces pretty easily. Uh, for this race, I want to mention heading into our discussion of some of the key horses that the, the pace projector labeled this one of the rare times that we see it as a race that has no speed whatsoever. Yeah, there will be no early leader in this race, Matt. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the horse who... I guess is in front of the field will be listed as second place early. No speed at all. Uh, of course, I'm joking, but uh, somebody's got to go to the lead. And, and maybe we look for horses who generally like to be a little bit closer, but no speed at all. Uh, we'll also mention again, Bah Behemoth Star. We talked about him a little bit. I don't know if he's as good on turf as on dirt. He, he looks pretty equal. Again, he's entered, cross-entered in the classic and, little shorter field, maybe tougher competition, but a shorter field and a little bit more money. So that would be my guess. But if he's in, Behemoth Star is worth a look in the turf. Certainly the number eight is worth a look, Matt. Who took the money? Who took the money? A son of Street Boss, a five-year-old. And this is a horse who's won 10 out of 18 lifetimes, sir. Yeah, a horse that knows how to find the winner's circle for sure. Interesting from those uh, 10 wins, only three 
have been on the turf, Brian. The last two have been on the dirt since he came back from a bit of a layoff. This is a horse that has a win in a stakes race at fairgrounds also. And to note, they're going a mile and a 16th on the turf. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a rallier as well. So we were talking about a lack of pace in here. He's a horse who really does like to rally, and that could limit him. Uh, he is, uh, Matt said, three wins on the grass, but he's three of five on the turf. And his record at the fairgrounds turf course is even better than that. But a horse with little speed, uh, uh, just missed last time, uh, second on the dirt, and that was his second race off a of layoff. So he hasn't been on turf in a little while. Probably a deserving favorite considering his overall record, his record on the turf at fairgrounds. He's, he's just a classy horse who always rallies, but maybe that's tough here. On the other hand, number five, Woods and Water, is a little bit younger. He's a four-year-old son of Palace, Matt, and uh, he actually was fourth last time. That was in a dirt race. Before that, his turf form looks really good. Yeah, he was fourth in that dirt race. That was a dirt race with a really good uh, field amongst these uh, Louisiana Reds. <laughs> Three for four uh, since switching to the turf. Three to three wins from four starts and switching to the turf. He was second behind Open Company in a stake at Louisiana Downs. Have you been to Louisiana Downs, Brian? Louisiana Downs, I've never, that's one of the tracks I've never been to. I'm sure I've been to Fairgrounds plenty, uh, but Louisiana Downs, no, I've never been there. And getting back to uh, Woods and Water, Matt, uh, he has more tactical speed for sure than who took the money. We see the morning line there. This is the track morning line. Who took the money? Nine to five. Woods and Waters, three to one. Woods and Waters should be, would be, looks certain to be on paper closer to this slow, early pace that we expect in the champion state turf. Woods and Waters actually ran four turf races in a row before the last one. And like you said, uh, near miss in open company, three other wins there. So Woods and Waters, turf form, really good of late, the uh, four-year-old son of Palace. Uh, Real City Speed is another horse who has good recent turf form, Matt. Even though his last one came in claiming company, he dropped down to 20,000 and he won easy. He was claimed out of that race. But he's got a lot of good turf form, uh, especially recently. And... Um, uh, a bunch of wins on the turf. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like uh, the new connections uh, were uh, trying to find a horse to enter on uh, Champions Day, maybe in this race when they took this uh, this Real City Speed for $20,000. Yeah, it's not a real solution. And before that $20,000 race, he was running uh, races where you wouldn't think he would be dropped into a $20,000 race. So they jumped on it. He won easy, and he's coming right back here. Uh, a horse, uh, he was beaten by Woods and Water um, uh, reasonably decisively a few starts back, but uh, he's, he's running enough good turf races to believe that he is a shot. Uh, we should talk about a few more in, Matt, in here, Matt. Boudreaux talking, he's a real late runner, uh, a son of tail of Akadi. Uh, he often gets a share in these races. He often rallies into the trifecta, the superfecta, but uh, that 0 for 11 lifetime record on the fairgrounds turf makes me not have him as a likely potential winner on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And I think we should mention also uh, the six horse uh, Regal Kingdom, who's eight to one on the morning line, just to, if only for the, the connections of this horse uh, trained by Graham Motion, who doesn't run that often. Uh, at the fairgrounds and and ridden by jockey Jareth Loveberry. This horse is a new gelding. You can tell from the name maybe that this horse is by uh, Animal Kingdom. Since the horse was moved to the barn of Graham Motion, he's been running in uh, open company at all the tracks in the Mid-Atlantic, Laurel, Delaware, Belmont, Aqueduct, obviously against tougher company. Yeah, it, for sure, tougher competition. Um, he's a three-year-old, we should mention, uh, but he ran in a, e even the races that weren't stakes races up north. Uh, he ran against some good horses. Even even an allowance race I saw at New York was uh, there were stakes horses in that race. So Regal Kingdom, 
there's a lot to like, and, and the first time gelding is is also an interesting angle. Um, sometimes horses improve right out of the gate when they have that surgery. So Regal Kingdom, one to watch. Uh, one, uh, another thing about Regal Kingdom, like Bujo talking, there's not a lot of speed there. And his last two races were actually at a mile and a half. So it's yeah. a question uh, how far he's going to get out. But Graham Motion, uh, Jared Loveberry, uh, first time gelding, back class. Regal Kingdom becomes an interesting horse if he can at least stay uh, somewhat near what is, again, expected to be a slow pace. All right, Matt, that's three of the four races we're covering on Louisiana Champions Day at the fairgrounds. We haven't talked about the Phillies and Mares at all, so we got to get at least one female race in. That's only fair, Matt. Maybe we should have had two, but these were the four races we chose. The other one is called the Ladies' Distaff. The Ladies' Distaff, which I felt was a little bit redundant in the name, but that's, again, I digress now. Uh, anyway, this is a 100,000 back on the dirt, the main track. Again, we're looking at a fast track on Saturday, mile and a 16th. Uh, maybe the most familiar name in here to um, to people that don't uh, dabble too often in Louisiana racing or Louisiana bread racing is Sabra Tough, Matt, because Sabra Tough has run in a lot of big races uh, without winning, granted. But Sabra Tough was, for example, fourth in last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Uh, this year, again, uh, she's taken on tough horses, tough competition. For her trainer Dallas Stewart, Sabra Tough, uh, not a filly with a lot of speed, and she did get one prep in uh, down in Louisiana against Louisiana Preds, and she couldn't get there when she finished third. But still, that back class of Sabra Tough is something to think about. Yeah, it sure is. And Dallas Stewart is the trainer, uh, um, and we know he can pull the upsets like he did last weekend uh, in the Cigar Mile, um, and another one of those. Good performances in a big race was this summer at Saratoga when uh, Sabertuff finished fourth in the Alabama. Fourth in the Alabama, fourth in the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. I mean, that looks good against Louisiana bred competition here. But again, she had one race. She couldn't get up there. Will she get up here? We'll see. But an interesting uh, addition to this field. Maybe the horse to beat is AG's Charlotte, Matt. This is a daughter, Mo Tom. Uh, Mo, Mo Tom was a, was a horse, to, uh, Louisiana horse I liked a few years back. And now we're seeing some Mo Tom sons and daughters uh, uh, sprinkled into these Louisiana bread, bread stakes races. Trained by Patricia uh, West, this four-year-old was second as the favorite last time. Uh, she could never get to Vail Mail, who's also in the field. But A.G. Charlotte's run a lot of nice races that... Uh, would seem to figure in well in, in this uh, in this group. Yeah, Brian, and you mentioned horses, uh, the number of horses that run on turf and dirt. Uh, she's another one of them. To me, I think she is a better horse uh, running on the dirt. Um, and uh, uh, A.G. Charlotte gets the services of Martin Pedrosa Jr. Yeah, A.G. Charlotte, certainly one of the ones. Um, morning line favorite. It, I'm not sure she'll go off as the favorite. I think it's a pretty wide open race. We've talked about two of them already. A.G. Charlotte certainly could be the favorite, but not necessarily. Uh, the horse that beat her, Vail Mail, last time. Vail Mail uh, wired that field, the daughter of Bodie Meister, uh, in a stakes race. That was probably her best race of her life. And A.G. Charlotte just couldn't get her down the stretch. Uh, six to one on that, looking at that performance, looks uh, pretty interesting on Vail Mail. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, uh, the odds look promising on that one. I don't know if uh, they th that's one that maybe his odds will be a little bit lower. Uh, uh, Speed Horse and gets the services of James Graham, one of the top riders uh, at the, on the fairground circuit. Yeah, James Graham was the rider of the week last uh, week yep. as uh, the uh, Irish import won his 3,000th race uh, over here in America. So congratulations to James Graham, who winters every year down in uh, New Orleans. Uh, I think there's other horses to mention. And just looking at the morning line, you can tell there are other horses to mention. Uh, number two is Free Like a Girl, Matt. Free Like a Girl is a, another one of those L deals. 
She's a four-year-old filly. Um, one thing you got to look at right away with Free Like a Girl, 14 wins and 31 lifetime starts. Yeah, that's a, that's an impressive number. Uh, can uh, That girl can certainly find the, the winner's circle. We certainly also want to uh, mention st the three-horse star moment, who's four to one on the morning line, uh, a horse that, that runs a stalking trip uh, when she's at her best and uh, coming back from an August layoff. So there's a little bit of question about that, but a big name trainer in Brett Calhoun. Yeah, certainly Brett Calhoun is one of the, uh, the guys we talk about a lot, uh, uh, especially when we're talking about the Kentucky Derby trail uh, that happens down in New Orleans for one thing. But uh, yeah, star moment is the three-year-old in the field. Uh, a daughter of Star Guitar, again, another Star Guitar with a shot here. Star Moment has been very good. You mentioned she hasn't run since August, which is, you know, a, 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 a bit of a layoff, uh, less than four months. But Star uh, Moment, uh, really good form. Uh, last five races, in fact, she's got four wins and a second. Uh, uh, she looks like she will fit in. And this is, a, of course, a time of year, maybe. We've even passed the point where we can say this is the time of the year where good three-year-olds can step up and uh, certainly compete with the older horses. But a nice, our last race we talked about today was a nice field again, Matt, and another one like the Juvenile. I think it, it probably is a good betting race if you're uh, smart enough or lucky enough to uh, find the winner in there. Uh, all right, Matt, uh, in celebration of the Louisiana Breads, and I'm shocked that you've never been to fairgrounds or new orleans or even the state of louisiana yeah what do you have what do you have to say for yourself uh, uh, it, it's a bad uh, it's a bad opening on my uh racing resume your racing resume i'll i'll go as far as to say your culinary culinary resume matt because i don't know if there's a town where i enjoy eating uh you can tell by looking at me that i enjoy to eat and uh New Orleans uh, is a place where you can visit for a lot of reasons, but food being well up the list for me there as well. Let me get a party shot from you before we say goodbye. We got to do our top picks, though, Brian, before we go. Did I, did I skip over top picks? I think tell so. Me your top pick, tell me your top pick in the classic, Matt. All right. Let's do the, uh, the, the top picks. <laughs> I am going to try and beat. Uh, touch upon a star who will be the heavy favorite. Uh, I don't know if that might be foolish, but I am going to go with Tumba Rumba, Brian Lynch, and a lot of really good performances against Open Company. Yeah, I respect Tumba Rumba. Having said what I said about him winning at three different tracks here in Kentucky, and all pretty good form uh, company as a three year old, but uh, Touch Upon a Star has proven to me that he is not your average. Uh, Louisiana Brad, much, much like his sire star guitar was in touch upon his start. Numbers are, are impressive. His speed is impressive. And his two recent races in open company uh, this year, I, I came away very impressed with. So I can't pick against anybody but the favorite in here. But I will not be on the favorite, the juvenile math. That's because I looked at that pace and I said, give me the rallier. I'm on El De Niro to pick up the pieces in the juvenile. How about you? That makes sense, Brian. Can't argue with that. I'm going to go with spinning aces again with the op with the open company angle with that big win in the Jean Lafitte at uh Delta at Delta Downs and and spinning aces you know can sit off the pace just a little bit yeah spinning spinning aces is the one that scares me most in the juvenile for sure in the turf mat I see we're on the same uh winner top pick here which is the only one of the four races that we are Woods and Waters, I, I think, has more tactical speed than the favorite. I think he can. Uh, I think he can beat the favorite. Yeah, I, I like his uh, recent form uh, on the turf with those three wins from four starts. Yeah, he can dirt, but I think Woods and Waters is his better on turf. And there are some others in that race where I'm not sure if they're better on turf. So I'm going to take the turf horse as well. Uh, the distaff, we differ. Uh, tell me who you have as your top pick. I'm going with uh, I'm going with AG's uh, Charlotte in here. You mentioned that maybe this one would uh, be a little higher than uh, five to two and may not be the favorite. I kind of agreed with that. I liked uh, I liked her second place finish just three weeks ago. 
I'm going to jump on the three-year-old here, Matt. Brett Calhoun, this horse has such nice form. Of course, I'm talking about Star Moment, another star guitar. Um, Brett Calhoun wins a lot down there, and I think this filly is uh, probably ready to prove that she can beat the older Louisiana bred mares on Saturday. All right. Well, thank you for reminding me to do top picks. What was I thinking? Now, now I think we're all ready for your parting shot, sir. Thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah, the, the, the fans uh, come here to see our top picks, Brian, not us uh, talking about uh, all the things we do. Anyway, uh, I feel like covering the Louisiana Champions Day maybe gives me a little bit of New Orleans and Louisiana experience. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, enjoy the races at Fairground. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be talking about fairgrounds more for all the good Kentucky Derby preps they have along the way in the next few months. But for now, a celebration of the Louisiana bread, something Matt and I don't always jump into. Next week, we have two-year-olds, open company two-year-olds, because we're going to be looking at the Springboard Mile Friday night at Remington Park, as well as the Los Al Futurity, which is Saturday at Los Al Mitos. That's it. That's the show. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, do it. Turn on those notifications. Matt and I love to read the comments as well, so feel free to do that. We appreciate you. Good luck. Have a nice week. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.